Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. It's time, once again, for those egocentric attention whores, Harry and Meghan. As I mentioned in my video entitled, Harry and Meghan are losing America's sympathy, which I released on December 30th, I had a feeling that I would have to do a video or two about Harry's upcoming tell-all book that's entitled Spare. Well, that day has come because the book is going to be released on January 10th, which is only a week from tomorrow at the time that I'm recording this video. And some insiders who've gotten to preview the book's contents have said some rather interesting things. So this article appeared in The Independent, and its title is a little ominous in a way because it begins with Prince Harry's memoir Spare is going to be tough on William in particular. So it could be worse than what the royal family is expecting. Some insiders have apparently gotten a peek at it. Prince Harry's forthcoming memoir Spare is, quote, tough on William in particular, unquote, a source with knowledge of the book has set. The personal and emotional memoir, which has been ghostwritten by Pulitzer Prize winner J.R. Moringer, will be released by Penguin Random House on January 10th. The source told the Sunday Times that while King Charles, quote, comes out of it better than I expected, unquote, the same cannot be said for the Prince of Wales, who is Prince William. They explained, quote, generally, I think the book will be worse for them than the royal family is expecting. Everything is laid bare. Charles comes out of it better than I expected, but it's tough on William in particular, and even Kate gets a bit of a broadside, unquote. Well, I'm not actually all that surprised. Harry really seems to have it in for Prince William, and this is just really ridiculous. But there's a little bit more that we're going to get into that I think will help explain it. In the Harry and Meghan so-called docu-series on Netflix released last month, the Duke of Sussex claimed that Prince William, quote, screamed and shouted, unquote, at him after a row broke out between the brothers over Megxit. That's the term that got coined over in Britain with the departure of Harry and Meghan from the royal family. There are these minute details and a description of the fight between the brothers. I personally can't see how Harry and William will be able to reconcile after this. The source also told the publication. As I talked about in my December 19th video entitled, Meghan Markle and Harry Demand Apology from Royal Family Who Aren't Responding, part of their demand was that they wanted to meet with the royal family to discuss their issues. But the publication of Harry's tell-all book next week, which is not going to be in any way flattering to William or Kate, who are the future king and queen of England, I don't believe that Harry or Meghan actually want to reconcile with the royal family. In my opinion, Harry's upcoming book appears to be just one more means of attacking William and Kate as part of Harry and Meghan's ongoing efforts to gain public sympathy, notoriety, and a recurring cash flow at the expense of their deteriorating relationship with the royal family. Harry and Meghan want to cash in not only on their various claims that they have made against the royal family, but also on the increasingly apparent jealousy that Harry probably has for William, and that apparent jealousy might stem from Harry not being the firstborn son. What's truly sad in all of this is that I highly doubt that their mother, the late Princess Diana, would have ever wanted to see her two sons fighting like this. To better understand why Harry named his upcoming book Spare, this 2018 article that was written shortly before Harry and Meghan got married provides a lot of insight into what the term means with regard to a royal family. The wedding of Prince Harry of Wales to the American actress Meghan Markle has put the role of the quote-unquote second son into sharp focus. Whether you are a royalist or a republican, the role of the second heir to the throne, or quote, the spare, and its evolution through history is an intriguing story. There are a lot of remarkable comparisons to be made between the expectations and career choices of Prince Harry and those of his predecessors. The common thread is always that the second son is expected to both behave in a manner one might expect of a future ruler, but also be seen as something else, something not threatening to the position of the actual heir. 
Royal families always want to have a minimum of two children in the event that something happens to the first board, because that's supposed to be the heir. So the second one is the spare. That's what it means. As soon as the hereditary systems were established in human societies, monarchs recognized that to create continuity of power for their family, as well as stability for society more generally, it was necessary to have at least one healthy male heir and one in reserve should the eldest son perish. In a brutal pre-modern world, the death of the eldest son was common. Several well-known monarchs in British history were in fact second sons due to inadequacies of early modern medicine, notably Henry VIII and Charles I. This was true even more recently in the case of King George V, who succeeded his elder brother, Prince Albert Victor, as heir in 1892 after he succumbed to pneumonia. And yet, the existence of the spare was almost always a problem. The position of the spare became unbearable. He was required to behave in a manner that was impeccably princely, and yet if he looked too strong and too confident, he was seen as a threat. These unresolvable contradictions led several second sons into open rebellion against their older brothers, and many ended their lives physically exhausted, their reputations in tatters. I really liked this particular 2018 article because it truly seems to shed light on what is occurring between Harry and his brother William. And what the article implies is that Harry is in an open rebellion against his older brother, which appears to have begun sometime after Harry and Meghan got married and before they quit the royal family in 2020. If Harry and Meghan want reconciliation, then why do all of their actions suggest otherwise? Only time will tell but I think everyone already knows the answer. Thanks for watching today, and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, and please feel free to share a comment. If you'd like to see more of our videos in the future and help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button, and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Out Loud Geek.